just want the whole world to know about my black brother. What's going on guys? Welcome back to the channel. We're gonna get into the life story of Angie Stone. And if you like this video, make sure you subscribe and join the team. My name is Antoine and you're watching Urban TV On Demand. Angie Stone came up the old school way. She would be considered a professional musician in which you don't hardly see today. She wrote songs that followed her life and how she felt. Her breakthrough as a solo artist took about two decades, which pretty much broke all the rules on how to make it in the music industry. But for Angie Stone, that long musical journey and all the struggles that she did to make it to the top came at a crazy cost. Angie Stone grew up as Angela Brown. She was the only child of a working class couple in which they stayed in Columbia, South Carolina. When Angie was in high school, her interest was music and sports. And around that time, hip hop was just starting to lay down on the scene. This was around the late 70s. And around that time, Angie was so into hip hop, she decided to start her own trio with a couple of friends that she met in a cheerleading team. The group was called The Sequence. They end up getting a good local following from parties and doing shows at the local skating rink. The group, The Sequence, continued to do shows around the way, and they also started to write their own songs. Angie's group, The Sequence, end up making a name for themselves, and they would end up meeting Sylvia Robinson, who was the owner of a record label back in the days called Sugar Hill Records. The Sequence cut their first record after getting their record deal with Sylvia Robinson at Sugar Hill Records. That song was called Funk You Up. The single Funk You Up was released in December of 1979. It was the first charting single by a female rap group. You better get yourself together. Go funk you up, funk, go funk you up. The Sequence, mm -hmm. your first female, like, female group to go gold. Yeah, the first female group, period, to do an original rap record, to do a rap record that uh, garnered the world. Mm -hmm. uh, we had our neighborhood rappers, we had our New York City rappers, but Sequence was the world's rappers. And I think people get it twisted. Mm -hmm. The song rose to number 15 on the urban music charts. Angie's music group, The Sequence, was now getting a taste of the music industry. With the success of Funk You Up, it would help establish The Sequence as hip hop's first charting female group. As she toured with other artists from the label Sugar Hill, Angie would end up getting into a personal relationship with a guy named Rodney Stone from Funky 4 MCs. Like it's the joint. We're gonna prove to the world that Rodney, known as Little Rodney C, he would further educate Angie about the music business during their relationship. At that point, we did get married. We did get married. It didn't last long because it wasn't right. Mm. But at the end of the day, we did good business together because I have to shout him out as the person that taught me the ropes in really? the industry. Yeah. Over a period of time, the group The Sequence will record three albums for the record company Sugar Hill, which was filled with a lot of songs that was written by themselves. After spending some time with the record label, by 1984, the group The Sequence started to ask questions about their deal there. And around that time, Angie started to worry about the future there. But within that same year, Rodney and Angie would end up getting married. Together, they would birth a daughter named Diamond. But that marriage would not last for long. Angie and Rodney's relationship fell apart. Angie would continue to move on. And to support herself, she would find gigs, singing on commercials, and even playing the saxophone for Lenny Kravis during his shows. She would also horn in her skills as a songwriter, which led her to the calls coming from MCA Records to work with other artists. MCA Universal Records would sign Angie to a deal to write songs for other artists. She would also receive an advance for $25,000. And with all the work she's been putting in at the studio, she ended up catching the ear of a couple of musicians. 
Those musicians would be David Bryant and Willie Bruno. Together, they will form a group and end up striking a deal with A&M Records. And this R&B trio would be called Vertical Hold. By the time Vertical Hold's debut album was released in 1993, Angie would get into an unstable relationship with David Bryant. Because of the problems within their relationship, Angie started bringing her feelings within her music and led to a single called Seems You're Much Too Busy. Seems You're Much Too Busy rose to number 10 on the R&B chart. The single, Seems You're Much Too Busy, seemed to secure Angie Stone's musical future, but not long after Vertical Ho's second album, it was titled Head First. This music business started to be a struggle for Angie. Between music and different relationship issues, Angie kept going, trying to reach her goal within her music journey. As Angie continued into the mid-90s, after two albums with Vertical Hold, Angie Stone was back on her own. But after trying to find her way on her own, she found a new sound that's gonna change her musical journey. Angie Stone would help D'Angelo with his album, Brown Sugar. She would spend time, days, and nights helping D'Angelo get the album off the ground, and they would finally fall in love. We know with Kendrick Spears, it was almost like, you know, it was supposed to be. Always gotta have the pretty ones, right, Angie? Once we fell in love, it almost like he had a spell on me. If you're enjoying the story of Angie Stone, make sure you subscribe. Don't go nowhere. There's more to come on Angie Stone right here on Urban TV On Demand. Let me tell you about this girl. Maybe I should. I met her in Philly and her name was Brown Sugar. Between that relationship, they would have a child named Michael. But falling in love would lead to Angie putting her music on hold. The album Brown Sugar would be released, which would debut at number six on the Billboard charts. The album project Brown Sugar would be a major R&B success. By the late 90s, D'Angelo and Angie Stone's relationship would fall to the ground. Angie Stone would then refocus her career. Angie lifted her head up and got back into the studio and she ended up catching a break. A few demos that she done while working in the studios made its way to Arista Records, which caught the ear of A&R executive Peter Edge. That A&R would then bring Angie Stone's demo to Clyde Davis of Arista Records. Angie would strike a deal with Arista Records, and this would be her first solo album of her career. She would title the music project Black Diamond. She said it was a tribute to her daughter. Angie Stone would release her first single as a solo artist, No More Rain. It would chart the R&B charts at number seven. After 20 years of being in the music business, Angie Stone would finally find where she's supposed to be in this music industry, and that's a solo artist. This is definitely an album that released me from the bondage that I felt from D'Angelo leaving me. But more importantly, I moved forward. I forgave myself for feeling that way. It was a tremendous sense of uh, accomplishment because it was something that I was forced to do on my own. The album project, Black Diamond would go gold, and Angie Stone would be back, focused, and on the road again. During the success of her album, Clyde Davis would then leave Arista Records and start his own record company, J Records. He would then take Angie Stone along with him. Angie Stone would continue to do her music back in the studio working with the best songwriters, musicians, and producers. Angie would stumble across another huge hit. It would be called Brother. The song would be dedicated to black men. This single would come off the album Angie Stone, Mahogany Soul. 
but it was the next single on Angie Stone Mahogany that would launch Angie's career to new heights. It was a song that nearly didn't make it to the album Mahogany Soul. The song would be called Wish I Didn't Miss You. It would go number one on the dance charts. Call my love hang call again. What in the world is happening? The song would be inspired by a single by the OJs called Backstab. What they do? It's not in your face. It's the backstabbers. The success of this single would help push her album and make it go gold. That would be two gold albums for Angie Stone during her career. Mahogany Soul to date is probably one of the favorites of the Angie Stone project because I've proven to myself that I don't need anybody to do what I do. By the early 2000s, Angie would have two gold albums under her belt. With the success of two albums, Angie Stone would then get back in the studio and work on her third album. She would team up with the hit producer, Jazzy Faye. Well, what Angie told me when we went in the studio is, Jazzy, don't start listening to all my old stuff. She said, I don't want that. I want what you would do for me. They would both work on the album, Stone Love, and cook up some more R&B hits. Angie Stone working with Jazzy Faye would cook up another single, it would be called I Want to Thank You, featuring Snoop Dogg. Ladies and gentlemen, so many upstairs, no to go got me feeling free. Angie Stone's single, I Want to Thank You, will hit number one on the dance charts. The music video of the single will be the first to introduce Idris Elba from UK. Even though Angie Stone has success with the single on the dance charts, the album, Stone Love did not make any success on the R&B and pop charts. On top of that, the album Stone Love would be a failure compared to Alicia Keys' new album, who was a new artist to Jay Records, sold 5 million copies. Angie Stone's success would start to slide. She would end up leaving Jay Records and taking three years off away from relationships and music. Alicia and I know Tino Shay, she is my girl to the end of time. But now I'm looking like, oh no, I'm getting ready to lose my deal. After taking some time off, Angie Stone would then sign a deal with Stack Records in 2006. She would release an album called The Art of Love and War. She would release a single off the album with Betty White and the song was called Baby. This song would reach number one on the dance charts, giving Angie Stone three number one singles on the dance chart. Before you got your in and your brand new beat and your exclusive dream, that was inspired by someone hurting me yet again, someone taking the liberty to do what they want to do and very inconsistent. Years later, Angie Stone would be seen on TV, film, on stage, and also reality shows. She would continue to work on her music and also focus her time on her kids. I did the movie Hot Chick with Adam Sadler and Rob Snyder. Then I did The Fighting Temptations. And of course, I started getting little calls for cameos. I'm challenged by that. That's exciting for me now. I want to do it because I'm hungry to prove to myself this is something you can master and win at. Angie Stone will remain one of my favorite R&B singers. With all the hits that she made during her career, I still listen to today. I want to wish her and her family the best, success, and I hope that she will always be remembered for her music. My name is Antoine, and you're watching Urban TV On Demand. I'm the kind of person that I go hard on everything that I do. And now, it's like I've just begun.